The character of Moon Knight has been a long-awaited inclusion into the MCU for many avid comic book fans of the character, and many fans who know the character well were ecstatic to see Moon Knight make his MCU debut. While comic fans were familiar with Mark Spector and Stephen Grant, the relative obscurity surrounding the character of Moon Knight overall means that there are more casual fans who are not too familiar with the character in each of his various personalities. For comic fans, the inclusion of Mr. Knight in the Moon Knight series was a treat to behold, but many are criticizing some changes changes that this iteration of the character has undergone in the latest episode. And today, we're going to talk about just that. Are these criticisms about Mr. Knight warranted? How does he differ from his comic book counterpart? And could this just be the beginning of a massive character arc? Let's go ahead and break it all down. We'll talk about the controversy surrounding Mr. Knight and delve into an explanation why some fans are unsettled by this interpretation of the character when compared to his counterpart in the source material. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and begin. The first part about this controversy to note is that several changes were made to not only Moon Knight and Mr. Knight, but to Stephen Grant as well, which directly influenced this new interpretation of Mr. Knight. In the comics, Stephen Grant was more of a millionaire investor who was able to use his prolific wealth to fund Moon Knight's gear and escapades, very different from what we see in the Moon Knight Disney Plus series. This brought with Stephen a sense of confidence that the MCU iteration of Grant noticeably lacks, as this version works in a gift shop and has been shown to be mild-mannered and a bit timid. Much like Grant and Spectre, however, Mr. Knight and the more widely known Moon Knight are two distinct individuals with different practices and preferences for how they handle certain situations. While Moon Knight is reflective of Mark Spectre, Mr. Knight is a representation of Stephen Grant as a superhero. This means that Mr. Knight in the comics relies on his intellect more so than his combat prowess, reflecting Stephen Grant's own skill set and respective desires to find non-violent solutions to different scenarios. Basically, the opposite of Moon Knight. These inherent advantages and traits that Stephen Grant has in the comics, again, directly correlate with Mr. Knight and his personality. He's more sure of himself, more of an intellectual, and is much, much more accomplished. In changing Stephen Grant's character for the Disney Plus Marvel show, Marvel Studios has taken the assets that make Mr. Knight such a compelling character in the comics and are removing some of his defining traits. Some of the characteristics that make Mr. Knight so compelling are his charisma, his confidence, and his analytical approach to situations, which the MCU version of Grant sorely lacks, at least as of right now, and instead, Mr. Knight is relegated to being a representation of this alternate version of Steven. While this version of Steven is a compelling change of pace, the ramifications that this has on Mr. Knight and his personality cannot be overlooked. This means that the character who is meant to be suave and confident, as well as an analyst, is now relegated to a clumsy representation of an otherwise beloved character. We have to remember, though, that this is very very much the beginning of the storyline. This is simply why a lot of comic fans are actually quite upset with this interpretation of Mr. Knight. There have also been claims that Marvel is once again undercutting serious scenes with unnecessary comedic punchlines, which has been a major criticism of Marvel Studios that has persisted for several years. This happens when Mr. Knight lands in a superhero landing pose, only to fall over immediately after the annoyance of some fans. While the controversy is understandable, this moment serves not only as a funny moment, but it serves to show Grant's inaptitude in life and his suit as a superhero. And as of right now, these decisions for the character seems to make sense in terms of where he is at in his life. Again, at least for the time being. Simply put, Stephen Grant is not a superhero, and Grant has never had any immersive combat experience, let alone combat experience of any kind and especially to this degree, and this moment is meant to reflect just that. He is supposed to be clumsy, and the duration of the fight shows him scrambling to land just a few solid hits while in the Mr. Knight suit. While he has an increased level of strength and dexterity thanks to the suit, he still does not have the skill set and mental understanding necessary to adequately handle a physical fight, and he wants again has to turn to Mark in the primary Moon Knight iteration. Some have found this to be disrespectful to the Mr. Knight personality, but it's important to note that this is not the end of Grant's character journey that is set to take place over the course of the series. Though this is not Mark Spector's first time in the suit, this is very much Stephen Grant's superhero origin story, and nearly every origin showcases a hero's early days of being clumsy, unsure, and making mistakes. From Tony Stark's very first crude iterations of the Iron Man armor to Captain America's leather cloud combat garb from the first Avenger. This is simply showcasing Grant growing into the character that he will one day become, a far more skilled and seasoned combatant as well as a military mind, a suave personality that he will one day adopt, the truest version and the best version of Stephen Grant. 
Knight. This means that the personality of the character of Mr. Knight is not completely ruined, only that it's been put on hold in order to let Stephen Grant's character arc take place. And by the end of the series, we are far more likely to see the iteration of both Grant and Mr. Knight that we see more of in the comic books, especially as they handle a new world of superheroes, and their own superheroics. While Marvel has definitely had past instances where they were undercutting serious moments for the sake of comedy, and this is a valid concern and criticism, in our humble opinion, this does not seem to be the case for Mr. Knight, and his characterization seems to be in line with Grant's own personality as it stands at this point in the series. But anyway, watchers, what did you think of Mr. Knight's introduction? And as a fan of the comic books, were you disappointed with it? Do you think that this is very much just the beginning of Mark Spector, Stephen Grant, Moon Knight, and Mr. Knight's story, and that we should perceive it as such? Or do you think that Mr. Knight will continue to be a comic relief character? As always, my friends, thank you guys so much for watching the channel. Hit that subscribe button to assemble and join our team, and I hope you have a great day.